This is an easy 64 review of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. A triumph in game design, audiovisual artistry, and fantasy storytelling, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the greatest launch title ever made, the grandest Zelda adventure and perhaps the greatest game to ever grace the industry in the fans' hands that power it. Impressive, I know. Taking a bold leap forward in truly open world gaming, Breath of the Wild smartly becomes an adventure game that can be whatever any gamer wants it to be. While the storied and successful franchise has previously been perfectly suited for fans of well-tailored fantasy epics, Breath of the Wild evolves the series forward in its biggest transformation yet, all the while maintaining the 30-year-plus magic the series has come to cultivate. What I mean by the series' biggest change is plain to see when one first steps out into the biggest, best, and most bountiful land of Hyrule yet. Interacting with and collecting the environment is wonderfully distracting, providing spoils and new sights after defeating varied enemies and exploring the world freely. This world at large is a perfect showcase not only for Hyrule's glorious vistas, but also for the fine-tuned physics Breath of the Wild has to offer. There's a lot to list in the coming minutes, but even at the simplest level of smacking around bokoblins with the force of a sledgehammer, or watching Link fall to his ragdoll-like demise off of a cliff, this game is a joy to take in. Possibilities soon feel boundless throughout the beginning area of the game, the Great Plateau. Smartly designed to engage the player in mystique of the land and its stories, but most importantly the core gameplay of this new Zelda game, the Plateau introduces every major facet of Link's abilities in the first couple hours. Players soon discover that weapons are handled in a much different way than before. Instead of equipping bows and shields through pause menus of old, Breath of the Wild trades in Skyward Sword's circular overlays with linear ones that emphasize the trigger-happy gameplay of shooting arrows and the X-button flurry rushes and enthusiastic slashes of both one-handed and two-handed weapons. A flurry rush is the Wind Waker parry of this Zelda game, requiring much more skill to watch an opponent's moves carefully to dodge at just the right time, to slow time, and strike heavily. Manually jumping into the air, also a first for the series, can also slow time if one grows an affinity for aerial archery. Pulling off these maneuvers is a welcome challenge compounded by smart implementation of a stamina meter that allows Link to shoot in midair, climb almost any surface, run faster, and paraglide off peaks and over the land. This ties in directly with the multifaceted rewards that our Sheikah shrines disperse throughout the land. Not only do they serve as fun tests of combat or puzzles typically found in normal Zelda dungeons and serve as fast travel points, but beating them gives the player the choice to grow Link the way they'd like. Praying at certain points throughout the game after beating shrines will let Link increase his health, his means of surviving in the world, or his stamina, his means of traveling through it. Survival is further emphasized by the lack of recovery hearts and rupees. Instead of the usual slashing the grass and reaping the benefits, there is a wealth of materials if one is willing to look for them. Raw food materials collected from hunting or gathering can be cooked and experimented with, which turns out to be a worthwhile side game itself. The rupee economy is also fixed. The main way to earn funds for buying different clothes and other supplies is mining for, or bombing for, hidden ores hidden in rocks throughout Hyrule and selling them to any shopkeeper. Smaller collectibles are not the only element that has been reworked for the better. Equipable items mapped to a button of choice are replaced by runes that are all mostly introduced in the Great Plateau. Fixing the problem of some abilities being used once heavily, in a particular dungeon perhaps, and then rarely ever again, these few new abilities give Link nearly limitless puzzle solving and exploratory potential. Magnesis, my personal favorite rune, pushes and pulls shiny metal objects in every direction. It is extremely versatile for moving objects out of puzzles into traversable objects and combating enemies with stealthy metal surprises from above. Stasis takes time travel, or rather the lack thereof, to a new level, allowing Link to freeze objects and whack them to build momentum within a limited time. Cryonis is like a sand or water rod from recent 2D Zelda games in a three-dimensional space, providing up to three climbable ice blocks as platforms or guards when over water. Bombs are back too, and they don't run out. There are spherical and cubical versions to fit each kind of situation, and they can be detonated at any time from a significant distance away. 
These runes remove the sometimes annoying complexities, such as enforced time limits and limited ranges of past Zelda items, so that only the player's imagination and the vast game world are the restrictions this time around. Every game feature is put to the test in the open world, shrines, and four main dungeons Breath of the Wild has to offer. And while the main draw for many fans is this title's emphasis on open-air Hyrule at large with its loads to do, see, and kill, whether on horseback, flying in the air, or hiking through forests and climbing mountains, Breath of the Wild's optional structure takes the epic magnitude of the game and story to another level, making you want to leave Ganon waiting for a long time. The Divine Beasts, also crucial elements in the game's impressive narrative, are simply genius. All four dungeons requiring impressive display of all the player's skills and abilities thus far to even enter, they provide opportunities no adventure game has given yet. The ability to manipulate these colossi themselves by controlling a map that alters the entire design of each area Link tackles. As each Divine Beast features a different real-time alteration of the environment, and since Link is bestowed with all runes at the beginning of his adventure, these quests can be tackled in any order as well. It all combines for the cleverest interplay of story, characters, epic moments, dungeon design, and boss battles yet. The thought put into this Zelda game's main quest is so impeccable that I rarely ever felt dissatisfied with anything I accomplished as the hero of Hyrule. Everything from aiming my bow with optional gyro controls to racking my brain for the next Divine Beast puzzle solution was transportive, immersive, and fun. The same can be said with this game's boss battles and the unorthodox way in which they are tackled as well. They are on the whole more difficult than before and provide various methods of beating them into submission. Particularly powerful enemies such as the Lynels and Hinoxes scattered throughout the land, and of course we must not forget about the nerve-wracking guardians, act as sort of mini-bosses that can sometimes be the hardest challenges in the game. One solid hit from them can sometimes mean a game over, but even so, I never felt overly frustrated at the game I was playing. That fact is even more impressive considering how fragile Link's weapons and shields are in Breath of the Wild. Everything can break after a certain number of uses, but since there is such a wealthy amount and variety of swords, axes, spears, bows, and shields to be found, having to throw old items away or having them break entirely allows for another layer of welcome strategy and discovery to this open-air adventure. The few flaws and fixes I could imagine for Breath of the Wild can be listed on one hand without all of its fingers. Since there are so many items in the game, menu navigation could have been made a little easier with the implementation of the second set of triggers to scroll through pages. Also, it could rain ever so slightly less, because although precipitation allows you to shield surf nearly anywhere, a personal favorite activity of mine in Breath of the Wild, it takes away your ability to climb most surfaces and use metal weapons, meaning Link will be roughing it for quite a while if he gets caught in a storm. Even these flaws have their caveats as to why they may not be so bad, however. If it rains, you're only a short, fast travel and load screen away from something else unique and interesting. And while the aforementioned inventory menus are not perfect, Breath of the Wild also delivers on organization, allowing the player to easily keep track of main quest objectives, side quests, shrine quests, riddles, and recalled memories, which serves as a semi-complete cinema gallery for Breath of the Wild. Side quests can provide easier ways to obtain some materials and some significant comic relief to a very heavy story laden with the best characters the Zelda series has seen. Naturally, the main quest has a more interesting set of things to do and people to meet. Each ruler, champion, or citizen of Hyrule's few races has a distinct personality that is perfectly complemented with the heroic situations they're placed in. Even Link has more to offer this time around, and Zelda herself sports one of the most fleshed out character arcs in Nintendo history. Without spoiling too much, Breath of the Wild takes the player through a formulaic but hardly ever cliche story that is all about the nature everywhere and the forces that work for and against it. With the personal touches of characters from the Zora, Rito, Goron, and Gerudo tribes, story beats in every corner of Hyrule feel satisfying and integrated flawlessly with the gameplay. Wonderful fantasy voice acting, ignoring an iffy line or two from some, really helps in delivering weight and impact to what the characters in Breath of the Wild go through. It's balanced too with traditional text reading, but from judging what we got in this game, I can't wait to see Nintendo go even further with voice acting Zelda games. Breath of the Wild builds up smartly to a finale, providing the raw materials for one of the most epic conflicts in video games at the very onset, but committing to smartly written and well-acted cutscenes and visual story developments that make the adventure so much more fleshed out if the player completes the main quest. All of this, story and gameplay, are exquisitely balanced as Zelda games know how, and one of the most beautiful games to look at and hear. The vistas of Hyrule are utter eye candy and actually compete with some real-world natural beauties. The cel-shaded look fully realized does justice for models close up, 
and from afar, sites turn into mosaics of the brightest colors outlined by the contours of the iconic Hyrulean landscape. It's even prettier when one realizes that you can go almost anywhere you can see. Contrary to some uninformed opinions, the traditional Zelda musical style is here too, but it's partly evolved. While exploring Hyrule or underground shrines, ambience is key, for instance. Soft, understated melodies or the fluttering of piano keys are executed in time with how Link interacts with his environment. Your heart rate will pick up when the high-pitched Guardian theme starts up, and you'll be whisked away when a horse smart enough to follow the trail lets you take in the scenery and subtle implementation of some familiar music. Sometimes, though, the soundtrack returns to more traditional roots. Boss fights, dungeon sieges, and other substantial encounters are tinged with old-school Zelda goodness, but also the flares of sci-fi and instruments mostly foreign to the Hyrulean spotlight. It all thematically works for the kind of Zelda game Breath of the Wild aspires to be. The organic feel of a soundtrack that does not need to be completely orchestrated or omnipresent is a rousing success. Unlike other Zelda adventures that have kept to a more linear approach of taking the player through a calculated journey of interrelated gameplay and story, that is still a marvelous formula, for this game does not replace other installments in the franchise, Breath of the Wild lets the player tackle what I have outlined in any order they choose. It lets the player tackle however much of it they want, while still allowing them to technically complete the game. This Zelda adventure is a modern marvel of fun, adventure, and discovery that taps into very emotional storytelling and passion from a team of developers that has evolved and grown to let more than just Zelda fans understand the mastery of the series. As usual for three-dimensional Zelda titles, for every moment that fills you with heroic valor or bittersweet tears, an equally as awesome test of strength, wit, or bravery awaits just button presses away. It's fitting that Link is on a quest to recover the memories he lost after his 100-year-long slumber, because playing Breath of the Wild gave me more happy memories in one week than nearly any other game ever has. It's sure to provide unforgettable times for nearly any player. And of course, there's still the long, welcome challenge of 100% completion and eventual DLC to consider. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild deserves its high praise, and while no game is quite perfect, this installment in my favorite video game franchise has come the closest to it yet. This sublime launch game for the Nintendo Switch and swan song for the Wii U may just be the greatest game we've ever gotten. The legend is as strong as ever. Link, you are the light. Our light. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. Thank you for watching my video review of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild here on the Zavinsky Stories channel. I certainly had a blast doing this review, and I had even way more fun playing the game itself. It truly is a fantastic masterpiece, and if you haven't been able to play it yet, I definitely suggest you do so. But the Easy64 reviews on this channel are not over, because I still have some Zelda games left that I really want to review um, throughout this upcoming year, so definitely stay tuned for that. And there'll be some other classic Nintendo titles that I'm going to be reviewing as well. So definitely stick around, and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon.